All right guys, so in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to make these little wooden, uh, I call them sink caddies. It's where you can put your soap and your sponges and stuff on near your sink. Uh, it's pretty simple. You can do it how, whichever size you want. Um, you just gotta measure the width and the length uh, next to your sink. Uh, but they turned out pretty nice. I did use a polyethylene uh, satin stain uh, so that they would be water resistant. Um, and uh, like I said, it'll just be a short little video uh, put out and y'all can do these. It's, it's really simple. What is going on everybody? So uh, it's been a busy week. I've had a lot going on, uh, but I got a couple of projects I need to work on. Uh, I did finish the table saw stand. Um, that video will be up. Uh, apologies in advance. The craftsmanship is not great, uh, but it is functional. So that is done. My wife has some little dishes by the sink and uh, she wants a little wooden tray to sit under them. And uh, I bought some nice poplar. This is like a this is like a four by six piece of one by poplar. Um, I got them from Lowe's. So, uh, and it turns out really nice. If you can look at the grain, it's kind of got a little bit of a green color to it. Uh, so we'll take that and we'll cut it out and uh, get it all set up. So I'll put you on time-lapse and y'all can watch me uh, do my thing. What's going on guys? So this is a pretty simple project. I got a six foot piece of poplar here and the main thing you want to do is get your measurements right first measure twice cut once uh, i just got this new table saw it's not a new table saw but just got it recently so i'm getting my measurements and lining everything up right now and uh, i'm using a japanese ryobi saw uh, this has a cross cut blade on one side and a grain cut rip cut saw on the other side which i like to use for smaller stuff so i've got my guard set at the width of the wood that I want to cut. Uh, like I said, this is a four and a half inch. So I'm uh, using my rip fence and lining it up to cut these boards at four and a half inches. All right, so I've got my belt sander here, and I just want to take off the rough edges, anything that uh, when I was cutting and try to line it up. And here I'm using the six inch disc to uh, round the edges. You could use a router or whatever you'd like. Uh, I typically just like to round it with the, the, the disc on my belt sander. It just comes out pretty smooth. And then here, I believe it's a 80 grit sandpaper I'm using. It's a little bit rougher than I would have liked, but that's all I had at the time on my belt sander. So I'll take it over here in a minute and we'll use my little Milwaukee M12 sander with a, uh, I believe it's a 220 grit sandpaper and just kind of smooth everything out. You want everything real smooth before you put this polyurethane on. Uh, I clamped them in to get kind of the rough edges. You can see a little bit of a cut mark from that table saw. And uh, I'm just trying to round out the edges, get everything looking real smooth uh, before I go ahead and put this polyurethane on. And I will uh, include everything I own in my shop that I use in this product if you want to purchase stuff. I believe I purchased most of it on Amazon. Uh, but right here, I'm just trying to round out the edges. I wasn't looking for a like a sharp crease. I just kind of wanted to round everything out. So I went with a satin finish. Uh, most of the stuff in our kitchen is like a darker color. Um, I didn't want everything, anything too glossy. So I went with a satin finish on these and this is the first coat. A really important what you wanna do is make sure you get all of that sawdust off because it's gonna be uh, getting back into your can of stain 
um, and mix it in with the stain while you're brushing it. It's just gonna make a mess. So make sure you take the time to wipe it off with like a wet cloth and try to get all of the sawdust that you used, that you accumulated sanding before you put the polyurethane on. And I believe I did about two or three coats of this uh, that I did in time lapse. And uh, sometimes I'll even go back after I've done a stain and do a light sanding after, afterwards just to help uh, smooth out any like you know gr gradient pieces when I, uh, when I when I was putting on a polyurethane so these are for chop blocks or for butcher blocks or for cutting boards I found them on Amazon a long time ago when I was making some cutting boards and I bought a pack of like 150 uh, I'll put these in the link in the bottom as well so if you were, are looking for something like this for any kind of application uh, you can use them but uh, this is after I had probably let the stain finish uh, dry for about an hour and a half, two hours. The polyurethane dries a lot faster than water-based, so it was fairly dry. And I had to use cardboard underneath too, so it absorbed a lot of the excess. But you really want to watch out once you uh, get done and just watch all the, where all the, the stain is dripping. But uh, yeah, and this is the second one. So... Like I said, I'll leave the link for everything at the bottom, and I hope you all like this video. All right, so here's the final product. Um, everything turned out real nice. I like the way they ended up. I don't, uh, we had these little, we had these little pans I was gonna put on, but I like just that by itself. So that turned out really nice, actually. So if you like that kind of project, I'm gonna be doing smaller projects like that. Um, I'm getting into bigger stuff, but if you like that. Smash the like button, subscribe, and uh, we'll see y'all next time.